I'm Mike Hanewald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and out here in a cornfield today, um, unfortunately, this is becoming kind of an annual occurrence here in Ohio, but talking about tar spot, um, we've got uh, a, one of the first earliest sightings here this year in 2024 um, in a field. I'm near Edgerton, Ohio, up in the far northwest corner of the state and in an irrigated field, which is where we would expect to expect to find it first um, because of the damp leaves. And I think that's why we're, we're seeing it. So we'll start off and talk about conditions that tar spot requires. So uh, the more hours of wet leaves that we have, uh, like what we have here uh, mid-morning from, from uh, last night's dew, uh, the more hours of wet leaves, uh, the faster the tar spot can grow and develop. It needs moisture. And so uh, for the areas of the state that have, have received plenty of rainfall um, or just the cool night temperatures providing dew, or in this case, irrigation in this field, um, all of those things are contributing factors to, uh, for tar spot to, to grow and develop. If we would turn dry, we would expect tar spot to, to slow down its development. Um, but, but even just a, a do, evening dew is enough to, for it to, to grow and, uh, and spread throughout the plant. Now, um, we're just seeing some early infections here in this field. And so um, if we look in close here and take a look, we can see um, only in the lower part of the plant so far we see in, see in those spots. And so you see the black spots and uh, the way to identify tar spot is that you see the black spots that come through on both sides of the leaf. And so you can see those starting to show up here on the underside of the leaf and they don't scratch off um, as, you, as you try and, and scratch them off the leaf. And so that tells you that it's, it's tar spot. If it rubs off, it's just, just insect droppings and, and nothing to worry about. Um, now you saw that I, I pulled this leaf from, from very low in the, in the canopy. And that's something we're seeing that's, that's different with tar spot um, this year as opposed to years past is that um, we're seeing it start and develop low and, and work its way up. And that's a change in how the disease has spread. So a few years ago, tar spot had to come from an outside source um, because we didn't have it in our fields in Ohio. And so the only way that it came was through wind moving spores from other fields into, into our cornfields. However, now that we've had it for several years, a lot of our fields that were corn two years ago had tar spot and we're rotating back to corn and there's still two year old residue here in the field and that those, those spores can release from there and start to work their way, way up the plant. We used to say, as soon as you saw a black spot, you needed to be out in the field spraying. However, now that it's developing from the lower part of the plant, I don't think we need to be in as quite a bit of a panic. It seems to behave a lot like gray leaf spot does where it starts in the lower leaves and works its way up. And until we get up here near the ear, ear leaf, I think we've got some some time uh, to get those, those applications made. Now the field that I'm in right now is just approaching tassel. Uh, we're getting close to that. You can see the silks have, have started to emerge. The tassels haven't come out quite yet. Um, and in, P, in our PFR data, our PFR proven timing is to spray at tassel. You can see the data there on your screen um, that R1, which is uh, tassel and silking, is the, the PFR proven time to spray. Um, however, uh, the testing that we've done through PFR didn't have tar spot playing into that. And so when we're dealing with tar spot, we might want to adjust that timing a little bit. And so uh, that could involve shifting it, shifting it later. And so I think when you're looking at tar spot applications, your window for fungicide is from R1 at tassel uh, through R2 at blister and then clear through R3 at the milk stage. R3 is when it looks like you've got a ripe or a sweet corn with brown dried silks. And any time during that window, is our profitable time to spray a fungicide if we're targeting tar spot. Uh, I would recommend that if you're just seeing it in the very lower leaves like this, or if, it is, if it's not present in your field yet, wait a little while. That fungicide only gives you two to three weeks of protection, even in the best, best case scenario. And so um, we don't want to spray too early and have tar spot come in later and, and cause some issues and then have to make a second pass. Um, especially with lower grain prices, uh, anything we can do to keep our cost down is, a, is tends to be a, a good move. And so if we can keep it to one fungicide pass, that's going to be a good, good idea. One last thought I want to leave you when it comes to fungicide timing is um, trying to avoid spraying during pollination. Um, if you have tar spot and have to get out there and spray, by all means, get it, get it taken care of. But if you have the option to avoid spraying during pollination, there can be some benefits. And that comes down to vomitoxin. There's no fungicide that will prevent you uh, or guarantee that you won't get um, vomitox in the fall. That's highly dependent on other conditions, um, both now and later in the growing season that we can talk about later. Um, however, spraying during pollination could 
potentially reduce the amount of amatoxin that you have. Um, so we had a study that uh, we did last year at London PFR where we sprayed just prior to pollination, uh, kind of the time frame we're, we're looking at here where the tassels are just getting ready to emerge. And we compared that to spraying um, during pollination. And we saw that when we sprayed just prior to pollination, we actually had a little bit bigger yield increase, but then we also saw a lower vomitoxin score. And so spraying during pollination co um, combined with the vomitoxin uh, pro favorable conditions for vomitoxin later on can actually give you a higher number. And if you avoid spraying during pollination, it doesn't mean you won't get vomitoxin, but at least you know that you didn't do anything to make it worse. And so either spraying prior to tassel emergence or spraying after you're done pollinating is going to be the way to go. And a lot of times with tar spot spraying after you're done pollinating is the better timing for tar spot anyway. So to wrap up, a uh, key thing is identify it. Black spots, both sides of the leaves doesn't scratch off. Um, wet, damp conditions, especially on the leaves, are what's favorable for tar spot development. And try and, and uh, just check your fields. Uh, look at your hybrid ratings and uh, know on which fields are most likely to show it first. Keep an eye on those and wait until you actually see it before you pull the trigger to spray so that you don't spray too early and you have a better chance of one application uh, getting you through the season. If you have any questions about this or any other agronomic topic, feel free to reach out to myself or your local VEX representative and we'd be happy to help.